But what happens to the batteries? The perennial cry of the EV skeptic fills the air like the spring song of the common grackle. Harsh and kinda grating. But it is a fair question, and while it might not feel that way after some gasoline super user has put in their two penneth along with some hoary old chestnut about taking days to recharge and needing a very long extension lead, ha 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 it's a question that deserves an answer. Thankfully, folks far cleverer than me have been looking at this problem for a long time. And today, we're going to look at that first step after a battery has been used in an EV for a decade. Reuse. But first. Well, we know where we're clicking, but we don't know where the notifications went. And we know where we're subscribing, but we can't say what we've seen. And we're positively commenting, and we know what we want, and the future is joining or supporting on Patreon. Yeah, okay. Transport Evolved's proprietary blend of fresh as a daisy news, reviews, and context is supported by viewers like you, and by me, Mauling Song Lyrics. If you'd like me to stop or continue, hang out till the end of the video when I'll tell you how you can support the channel. We're going to be taking a look at recycling in an upcoming video, but as EV batteries approach the end of their useful lives in mainstream automotive applications, there are a variety of uses they can be put to before they're recycled and the resources are extracted for a second go round. The first question that often comes up is, how can an end-of-life battery go on to a second life? I mean, it's not a trill or a time lord. Only using a battery in a full-size car is a pretty demanding environment. Most people expect that when you press the go pedal, the car will, well, go. You really don't want to press the go pedal and have a little light come on that says, please do not press this pedal again, because the batteries are incapable of supplying the amount of current required to accelerate that hard. Owners of the first generation RAV4 EV with original battery packs are, by now, mostly familiar with the little turtle light that comes on if those 20 year old batteries are pushed hard by an exuberant driver's right foot. But even though the batteries can't supply the energy that rapidly, they still do store a large amount of energy and can, if treated a little more gently, still be used to get that energy back. And while Toyota destroyed most of the first generation RAV4 EVs and Chevron stopped people manufacturing large format batteries way back in the early 1000s, so making a business reusing those packs isn't really feasible, there just isn't the supply, but what there is is an increasing number of decade plus old EVs whose packs are nearing the end of their lives. Well, kinda. See, the decade plus old Nissan Leafs and Mitsubishi iMeves of this world are entering the reuse supply chain, but more modern EVs with their better battery management and more advanced cooling are expected to last nearer to 15 years, so we're not likely to see really large scale projects using their packs just yet. But that said, we are starting to see what the future will look like, and there are several options for what's termed the extended use phase. As we talked about earlier, being a battery pack in a car is a pretty demanding application. That pack is made up of a bunch of different cells, and because each cell has tiny imperfections, some cells are weaker than others. And a few weaker cells will, unfortunately, impact the ability of the pack to deliver and store energy. Back around the start of leaf production, Nissan entered a joint venture with Sumitomo Corporation to form 4R Energy. Together they developed a process that can examine the state of health of each cell in an entire leaf pack without dismantling it, saving time and money, and identifying packs that can be reused as is, packs that need dismantling, and packs that may only be fit for recycling. One interesting side effect of testing batteries that's being exploited by Smartfill Energy, a project spun out from UC San Diego's Center for Energy Research, is that testing batteries requires a large amount of energy to be stored and then released. By designing a testing system that stores and releases that energy in a way that balances grid demand, the battery testing process can become an income stream for the company. But we'll circle back to reuse as an entire pack a little bit later, because 4R Energy aren't alone in taking the entire pack, case and all, and putting it back into service in another job. But when there's a mix of reusable cells with cells only good for very low demand applications, or possibly cells only good for recycling, 
that's when some other applications come into play. Those stripped down cells can be reused in hybrids, scooters, e-bikes and forklifts, and sometimes even back in less demanding battery electric vehicle applications. One example of reuse is German company Betteries, which is reusing cells in various e-mobility vehicles alongside a small portable generator replacement. The packs can be easily switched from one use to another. At a small scale, there are a bunch of little companies stripping down packs and reselling healthy cells for DIYers and for smaller scale manufacturers. So this is a process that I expect to expand and fill a very large void in the market. Okay, but the biggest and easiest way you can reuse an EV battery pack is just whipping the pack out from the car and sticking it wholesale into an energy storage project as an entire lump. As we move to phase out pika plants, these are usually fossil fuel derived gas plants that are switched on for short periods of time to meet surges in energy demand, and replace them with battery energy storage. Large scale battery energy storage products are going to become incredibly important. There are currently more than a thousand pika plants in the US alone, the oldest 200 of which have around a 60 gigawatt capacity, and those plants are mainly in urban and semi-urban areas, causing an outsized harm to the folks living around the plants. So it's not surprising that so many automakers have partnered to find ways to extract value from this second use of batteries coming out of their old EVs. As many legacy automakers are moving to producing significant number of EVs, they are planning ahead to the end of life phase for those vehicles. Jaguar Land Rover, for example, has partnered with Premac, an energy storage system specialist, to put the battery packs from Jaguar I-PACE development cars into off-grid energy storage systems. Similarly, Audi partnered with RWE to repurpose batteries from the development of the Audi e-tron. The 4.5 megawatt hour energy storage system holds renewable energy generated by the Hengsti Reservoir at Herdeck, North Rhine-Westphalia. Storing energy from renewable sources is, of course, a growing market, and North America's largest second use battery project currently at 4 megawatt hours, or 250 packs out of a final deployment of 17 megawatt hours of Nissan Leaf battery packs is currently operational in Lancaster, California. Projects like these are coming from automakers from BMW to Renault, so while it's definitely a question worth asking, what happens to the batteries, the first answer is they get reused. The challenge at the moment is because so few batteries are available, many of these are demonstration projects and research projects because the batteries are lasting longer than expected. But one day, one day, they'll find a new home. That's it for today, thank you for watching and we'll be back soon with more. If you liked the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join discord chat room, there's a link down there. If you haven't already make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our other channel Transport Evolve Take 2 and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. And of course, check your notification settings. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Trajota, Brophy Wolf, Tessa in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Center, and Denny Hyde and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button below to show us your support on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store, like this. Links are all below. If you're not in a position to do that right now, know that liking, sharing and commenting on our videos really helps support us too and helps us with the all-powerful algorithm. Thanks for joining me and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>